things were bad last year, things are worse this year. Um, what we discovered that was pretty fascinating was that people love nothing so much as seeing bad things happen to Cleaver Green. And there's a kind of, so that it really brings out a kind of sadistic element, I think particularly in women, in the audience, with the, the female audience. They love seeing terrible things happen to this man. He, you know, he is actually brilliant. He, he, he can get in court and run an argument that is entertaining and persuasive. And it's also legal, you know. Uh, so it works on all of these platforms. And then he can go home and live amongst milk crates and debt and, you know, be beaten up on a sort of nightly basis by people he owes money to. And, you know, he's a, he's a slave to his addictions, of course. So there are bits and pieces, of, particularly of my past. I, I, w I wouldn't suggest that there, that there are... Um, there's so much of my present in his behaviour, but there are elements of my past. When I was out of drama school and a lad about town, um, you know, a fool to myself and an enemy to the public at large, really. Um, so, but the, he's, he's a kind of, you know, we've, we've picked bits and pieces from all over the place. But I always love it when I'm reading the, a new script and there's a story from one of our lives that we are so familiar with because we're mates you know and so I love I love I love it when I read that there was a there was a sequence where Cleaver got mugged in a pharmacy in the last season and that was that's what happened to me I walked into a pharmacy with a splitting headache to to buy some headache tablets and and I walked into the middle of a of a robbery I actually tried to stop a guy Taking, yeah, like a moron. Like I cared if he took things from the pharmacy, but it was a weird sort of sense of social obligation or something that took a hold of me. And even as I did it, I thought this is. But I tried to because these guys were had their sleeves pulled down, were trying to get the tills open, and then when that didn't work, because so they didn't leave fingerprints right, and that didn't work, so they pulled the they actually pulled the tills out from the wall, and, and me know while well, there was another guy who was going absolutely apeshit with a. 16 year old girl who'd been left behind when the pharmacist ran away um, and so I was kind of like trying to figure out what the hell Did to do weapons? well no I didn't I didn't see any <laughs> weapons but I didn't know and as it turned out um, it, it turned out later when, when I was talking to the police afterwards they, they did but um, yeah no I, I just sort of grabbed the till as this guy was <laughs> trying to I mean, they were kids, they were 18, with baseball caps. And so I said, come on, put the till down, because I thought they were just taking advantage of the fact that their mate was going crazy. And then I got slugged from behind. And as I was sort of flying through the air with blood squirting out of my eyebrow, I thought, oh, it's a robbery. And the pharmacy girl came over after they'd run off, uh, and I was sort of getting up at the gun. She said, you know, you okay? Thanks for trying to help. What, what did you come in for? And I said, I, I, had, a, I had a headache. Um, so she came. I got some free Panadol. I got free Panadol. And then I had to spend the evening and you had more of looking at headache. mug shots from, of people in Maroubra and Coogee. There are some rough heads out that way. <laughs> sure I can tell you from looking at them. I mean, the mug shot for the sort of rest of the eastern suburbs was a book about that thick. Maroubra were two volumes, like that and that, yeah, A to, a to K, L to Z.